Welcome everyone to what I am now dubbing on Sundays, the Weekend MTG Update, where I will go through some of the notable news from the weekend and also some price changes that I have been continuously working on depending on what product we're looking at for the particular time period. And since we're still on Double Masters, let's start off with the price movement of the Double Masters showcase cards, uh, the foil ones in particular from the VIP packs. As we can see, we've had some movement generally in the downwards trends for most cards. A couple of cards seeing a little bit of a bump. Uh, one card, Jace, staying at dead even. Now I do have to make a correction from the previous weeks where I was calling the showcase slot EV value based on the price of all the showcase cards. That was incorrect because in the showcase slots, there are two different slots, essentially. One slot's always going to be just a rare card. It can never be a mythic. So that's the first slot, which I have accounted for in EV slot number one. And showcase slot number two, the EV for that's the second price, which factors in a two to one ratio for rares versus mythics. So as we can see with this week, we have a total downward EV of the uh, showcase cards with a rare showcase card in slot one being an approximate value of $26.31 and a EV value of $47.84 for the card in EV or in showcase slot two, which can be a rare or mythic at a two to one ratio for rares to mythics. Uh, so both prices have went down this week. Uh, Probably the biggest thing that caused the slot 2 EV to go down was the $59 drop in Forcible. Forcible seems to be one of those big movers just throughout the weeks. We, start, we saw it start at 547 it dipped way down to 392 and I think even lower in some cases, depending on where you were buying it. Uh, had a price surge back up to almost 500 and now we're back down in the 440 so who knows what this card's going to do over the next few months but we will see but in all things considered pulling seventy dollars having like an ev of seventy three dollars or seventy four dollars really for those two slots out of a one hundred dollar pack is pretty good uh but i do see a trend where the pack prices are going up and i think as of this recording i looked on tcg player and a box or a case rather of VIP packs, which would be 16 packs, is going for over $1,600, which is more than $100 a pack. Plus, you have to factor in your cost for taxes and shipping and all that other kind of stuff. So, uh, it seems like there's not going to be much more of this product going out, which I expect just because. This is being labeled as a highly collectible product for a certain uh, demographic of people. And so they're, they wouldn't want to like mass produce this. This would be something that they're going to keep at, probably at a single printing. And we're probably not going to see any second waves. I would be surprised if we did, but I will see what happens. Maybe they'll do like a little holiday bump up of some percentage. Now that's not to say that I don't think they should do a second printing. Shouldn't do a second printing of Double Masters. I think uh, it would be great to do just a second printing of the regular Double Masters stuff, the regular boxes with the regular box toppers, uh, because I, I think people do want it. But I don't necessarily think that they'll do anything with a uh, with the VIP stuff. And that's not even to say that it could be a second printing. It could just be a a back stock that they're gonna ship out at a lower quantity later on but we'll see what happens now for you all that watch my particular openings I have added in a box that will be opened up tomorrow which contained uh, a council's judgment a fatal push a thought seize an exploration a noble hierarch a sword of feast and famine a sword of light and shadow and an earth's power plant as my showcase cards 
Um, and I actually factored in the, or I tallied up the totals from last week. So if we're looking at our last week totals compared to this week's totals, we see that the first box actually went up uh, about $16, which was pretty good, it's like, you know, getting a profit. And I think the biggest gainer here was really the sort of Feast and Famine. Uh, box number two went down about $6. Which, I mean, there's just like a general decline in most of the cards, so like a buck here, a buck there, a couple cents here, that would really have a factor in for that. Um, and then this particular box went down a large sum of $86. And one thing I failed to mention about this was when I was doing the pricing last week for this, I was using the, the market mid and I've moved back to moving using the lows. So it just kind of shows like how big of a gap there can be between the low and the mid. But uh, I mean, we're still above what I paid for everything. So I'm quite fine with, with where we're at right now. So um, we'll be adding in another box here in, uh, in the next week uh, recap. But that's it for the pricing stuff for this week. So let's get into kind of the big news of the weekend, which was some of the reveal for the Commander Legends set. So we have a number of cards that were revealed for Commander Legends, and I started up a name and number crunch, and I will share this name and number crunch in the description below. So feel free to check it out. I will be keeping it updated as fast as I see stuff coming out. There might not be a lot of things coming out in the next month or so just because we're moving into Zendikar Rising season, but uh, you know, we might get some some cards here and there. So the first card that was spoiled, or not the first card, I'm just going by order, but numerical order according to the name of Number Crunch, uh, Prismatic Piper, which is an interesting card uh, in the sense that it allows you to add an additional color to a commander deck without really having to affect the deck all that much. So like, or just like keeping a general that you want to keep. So let's say I wanted to keep Atraxa as my general. Well, Atraxa is everything but red. I can partner... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. Because partner, both generals have to have partner. So you could have a general partner that could be missing a color that you would really want for it to have and you don't necessarily want to use another one of the generals that have partner, so this allows you to add like your third color in. So for instance, if you were playing uh, Thrasios and uh, you just wanted to have one additional color, like say you want to go um, Teamer with it, blue, green, red, well this uh, partner commander would allow you to add red into your deck without having to add like a red X commander or having a, like a commander that's just not going to do anything. And I mean, this is a common, so it's going to be pretty easy to get. Uh, the next card, which is a very cool card, I think, is Keeper of the Accord, which uh, it's like double tax duty. So at the end, at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures than you, you get to create a 1 1 white soldier token, which lets you keep up with like creature parity. And then just kind of the land tax ability at the beginning of each opponent's end step. If that player controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a basic planes card and put it on the battlefield tap, which is like pretty crazy. Like not only, well, it's more of like a Knight of the White Orchid uh, kind of card than it is like a land tax, but it's like you know a taxi kind of card where um, you get to get some advantages when your opponents are ahead of you. So you get to try and maintain parity. It's a pretty cool uh, card. And I've kind of broken this name and number crunch down into like three column lists because there's 361 cards in this set. So it was quite a bit ruly to have 361 cards in like a drop down menu. So the next card, which is also the buy a box promo, I believe, or some kind of promo for this uh, set is uh, Singer the Dark Baron, which is a commander that has partner, and just like a very vampire flavored. Uh, Singer is a vampire, but like just very flavorful in terms of what vampires traditionally do in Magic. Which, when another creature dies, you get to put two one one counters 
on Singer, and whenever the second ability is pretty cool. Whenever another player loses the game, you gain life equal to that player's life total as the turn began. So that's pretty cool. Um, so like, you don't really see unique abilities like this, and so Wizards doing a commander theme set really allows for quirky abilities that really affect multiplayer games, such as uh, Baron, or I won't keep on wanting to say Baron Singer, but Singer the Dark Baron's uh, second ability. Then we have a couple of uncommon legendary creatures that have partner um, that kind of work synergistically together. So Elena, which lets you add an amount of red equal to the greatest power among creatures you control that entered battlefield this turn. Uh, this is a pretty unique ability for red having a creature that adds mana. Uh, there are some conditions you have to go through to get it, and Alina costs a bunch to start off with. So I'm not sure how useful this commander is going to be, all things considered, but like the ramping ability is just there. Like, you know, you throw down like a ball lightning for, for three on your turn, and then you can tap for six red mana. Um, not that a lot of commander decks play ball lightning, but you like red does have a lot of creatures that have um, penalties to them, but have big power, which can really kind of let Elena ramp you in that kind of way. Um, the other uncommon legendary card was Halana Kessick Ranger. Uh, and they, they showed both of these together as like an example of like the partner mechanic. Um, and an interesting thing that we'll get to in just a second, but Halana has reach and whenever another creature enters the battlefield in your control, you may pay two. When you do that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature just like great like two to just you know kind of creature remove green's another one of those colors that has efficiently costed big dummies that would lend uh, this ability to really well so pretty cool card um before i move on with the rest of the little spoilers that we got uh commander masters or not commander masters but commander of legends has two different kinds of boosters and specifically to the draft boosters they are 20 card boosters for drafting and instead of drafting one card you would draft two cards so that's where like the partner mechanic comes in and every booster pack is going to have two legends in it so you know, that really lends to like the partner mechanic and just to drafting in general so um, a lot of that makes sense so moving on to the last bit of spoilers we have command sphere which just a good old reprint and command tower another good old reprint and something that's pretty exciting are the arena lands i guess or battle bomb lands that uh enter the battlefield tap unless you have two or more opponents so we have the enemy color lands. We got blue, green, um, red, blue, red, white, black, green, and finally uh, black, white. Like just a cool completion to a cycle that we saw in Battle Bond. Now, there are some interesting kind of name and number crunches here. I don't. I, I think I read somewhere that enemy fetches were not going to be printed in Commander Legends. Uh, I can't find where I read that at. I don't know if it was like a Facebook post or something along that line, so I'm not going to rule anything out yet. But if we're looking at our name in Number Crunch as it stands right now, it does lend to have the five enemy color fetch lands within Commander Legends. Like, Arid Mesa can fit anywhere above Command Tower. Uh, Marsh Flats and Misty Rainforest both can fit in between Command Tower and Rejuvenating Springs. Um, Verdant Catacombs can fit in the 361 spot. And I am missing one. Oh, Scalding Tarn. Scalding Tarn can fit right here in between Rejuvenating Springs and Spectator Seating. So, we can have all five of the fetch lands within commander legends right now um the name and number crunch allows it 
Uh, I don't recall seeing anywhere that enemy fetches were not were confirmed to not be in Commander Legends, so we'll just have to see if that happens or not. But it is something to keep an eye out for. If we don't see some kind of fetch within Zendikar Rising uh, in the next few weeks, I have a very strong suspicion that they might end up being here, unless I find where I saw that uh, it wasn't confirmed, or it was confirmed that they weren't going to be near. So I'm just going to put a big disclaimer on that notion. The name of Number Crunch allows for enemy color fetch lines, but there may not be in here. So just take everything with a grain of salt at the moment because you know we're working off the information that we have. The other big announcement about Commander Legends was that there is going to be a collector booster with for this set. And they will have like the extended art variants for a number of the cards, including the new the new lands and I think Command Sphere, Command Tower have them. Uh, and Keeper of the Court I saw as one as well. And I'll probably do like a, a secondary sheet for like the quote-unquote showcase style extended art cards for the set. But the other uh, big news about the, um, the collector's boosters for Commander Legends is that every legend in the set, I believe they said every legend in the set, I think it says like 71 legends, they will have a chance to appear in a new kind of foiling, which is like an etched foil foiling. And it's a pretty cool looking foiling. Uh, it reminds me of some of the other games. In particular, it reminds me a little bit of what they do in the Dragon Ball TCG uh, with kind of like layering foil on top of it instead of being within the card or within the art. Um, I will post a link to the video that Wizards of the Coast shared showing what an etched foil card looks like. They are pretty sweet. So uh, I feel like I'm probably going to procure a good amount of Commander Legends collector's boosters. So definitely some stuff to look forward to. Commander Legends is our November set to look out for. And I believe there's also two commander decks that come out with this. So we'll see what will be in those commander decks as well. The last bit of news that came out was the spoiler for what's going to be in the commander green set. Uh, so this is a set that contains eight cards uh, and it can be sold as a foil package or a non-foil package. I think WP and Premier stores have access to the foil packages. It'd be interesting to see what the price point on this package is, but we do know all eight of the cards that are within the set. We have good old Bane of Progress, Command Tower, Freilis, Omnath Locus of Mana, Seedborn Muse, Soul Ring, Sylvan Library, and Worldly Tutor. Like, I, I feel like Sylvan Library and Worldly Tutor are co both cards that really needed reprints. Um, especially Worldly Tutor, because I believe the only Worldly Tutor we have is the original Worldly Tutor from Visions, I think it is. Um, and Sylvan Library is just like getting getting pricey, so having like a more affordable option for a Sylvan Library can be pretty cool. Uh, in terms of like Commander Scope, because this card sees a lot of play, uh, just like it's played in almost every deck that runs green, and with uh, Joe Rail from M21, it's a very nice little combo to just be able to get a wolf into play every turn, along with other things. Uh, some of the things that I noticed about this particular set, so everything here has new art, which is pretty cool. Uh, particularly, I like to look at the Command Tower and the Soul Ring. The Soul Ring has a very uh, nature, woodsy vibe to it, so I wonder if every Commander color set that they're going to put out is going to have a Soul Ring that fits the theme of what's going on with the set. So maybe like some water in the commander set for blue or commander red having like fire, uh, you know, commander white kind of being in a wide open plane, etc., etc. I guess commander black having a soul ring in a, in a swamp, something along that line. And then I have a, like this command tower has a very interesting kind of look to it. To me, it almost looks uh, like if you took like 
Sauron from Lord of the Rings and merged it with Phyrexia. This is what you would get. Uh, very green uh, color as uh, palette to it. So I wonder if we're going to have like uh, five different versions of Command Tower. And so maybe every set will just have six cards with a Command Tower and a Soul Ring in it, or if they're going to be like different cards as we go along. But so let's see what they do for each of the colors when we get to that point. But this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, eight card little box set. This drops in December. So uh, I, I will be picking up a foil one uh, from whatever store I can pick up a foil one from. But that is it for today. Uh, we had a good bit of news this weekend, so it was quite fun to gather all the information and present it to y'all. Let me know what you all think. Uh, if you liked the video and you liked the uh, weekly news, I, you know, it seems like a okay thing for me to do. Um, if you don't like it, well, feel free to dislike it. it. Just helps me know what you all are thinking. And if you enjoyed today's video uh, toss it a like if you're not subscribed to the channel because I know I have a lot more people that watch my videos and are subscribed to the channel please feel free to subscribe it really helps me out and we have a lot more going by so I apologize if you guys hear that noise uh, in the background um, but yeah feel free to subscribe share with your friends let them know let them know what's going on uh, Stay tuned for like more news, more pack openings, and until next time, I hope you all stay safe, take care, and goodbye.